Hey, and welcome back to Tell Samira. So today I'm going to talk about what's bulimia, my eating disorder story. So if you ever dealt with any weight issues, uh, overeating, whatever that thing may be, I'm sure you might be able to relate to this story here. So first I'm going to go ahead and define bulimia. So bulimia is when a person eats um, an unusual amount of food, maybe enough for maybe three people, four or five people, whatever it is that you know. And typically if you are bulimic, you don't have this, uh, your eating disorder, you keep it a secret, meaning you're not going to go out with your best friends and then and just order like five plates of chicken wings and order a whole cake. This is something that you do in private. This is why it's like in an addiction. It's something that you're you're very touchy about. You don't want to reveal it to anybody, and nobody could really know by looking at you because you might be um, a normal size weight according to the uh, weight chart um, based on your height, and you may be a little smaller or you may be overweight, but you can still be bulimic. One of the things with bulimia is is that people, uh, get, they feel guilty when they eating a lot of food. So in order to wash away that guilt, they may uh, go on fast to try to lose weight really quickly. Uh, they may vomit so they don't uh, keep in all that food. They may use laxatives. They may overexercise. So th this is a lot of stuff that may go on with bulimia. Uh, one thing why I think bulimia happens is because people in this society, you know, uh, being thin is really smiled upon Re more uh, in the last maybe 10 years or so. Having a really big butt has become, you know, the thing, but it's still like a small waist, small frame, but a big butt. But before that, before that, 10 years ago you before that time you know it was just really thin that was the model you know so looking at what we see in society people may feel bad about themselves for me personally uh just um as i said in a previous video how i was body shamed you know by my mother whenever i gained weight you know everything was uh, always pointed out oh is that a mark you know she would say oh is that a mark on your face Ugh. is that a pimple oh your hair is brown Ugh. so i just had a lot of shame about you know my body you know and uh so when i was hearing that at home and then when i would go out you know, I would be like bigger than some of the, a lot of other people my size. So I just really felt that something was wrong with me. Something was wrong with my body. So for me, that's how I believe it set in. So I think trauma coming from a, a place where you feel abused and you feel food was a comfort. For me, food was a comfort. It was like stuff was going bad in the household. If stuff went bad at school, I was like, okay, but this cupcake real good. And I'm going to eat this cupcake and this thing make me feel real good. I used to have this saying, if I can't have no sweets for the rest of my life, life then just kill me because life ain't worth living so this is a lot of stuff that goes on with bulimia a person may start yo-yo dieting meaning being on diet after diet you know uh just constantly losing weight gaining weight losing gaining weight and i think the body is like ah that's how i imagine it so it's just a lot of stuff that goes on with it uh and just to um throw in my um book book plug here i created a book it's on amazon you'll see that down in the, the description even though i talk about bulimia this is a fiction short story i'm not talking about my life but i am talking about of course something i can relate to bulimia but this is a fiction story it's called i should have worn a curtain it's a tale of bulimia, self-loathing, and romance. So again, that information is down in the uh, description. And it talks about someone who had low self-esteem and who turned to food and who became bulimic and how they were trying to deal with that whole situation. Uh, so uh, yeah, back, back to this. So, uh, yeah, a lot can go in, a lot can go into it. So for me, like I said, the body shaming, then I started with the yo-yo diet and I was on one diet, um, after another, you name it. Um, I never did Jenny Craig, but let's say I was on, I would do a Weight Watchers program. Then I would do some Tybo. I would do this. I would do that. I would buy this shake. I would buy this pill. It was always something that I was looking for, a magic pill. I had grown up seeing that with my mom, that she was constantly on Dexatrin anything and so I took on that behavior not blaming her I'm just saying it's what I took on like hey maybe I can try to lose some weight so uh that's where it started with the yo-yo dieting then it started uh when I started finally eating healthy it became a food obsession how many calories is this oh is this too much fat oh is what is this going to do to my body you know I was just constantly always thinking about food where it was still pleasurable but in a way it wasn't because I was always so frazzled ah, food food oh my god I don't want to eat this i'm on 
this diet. Oh, I can't have jam. Oh, I can't have sugar. I can't, I can't. It was so much I can't have. All I began to think about was just food. It became really crazy making for me. Then uh, I hated exercise basically all my life. So I finally started exercising. Then that even became uh, something that was a, an obsession for me, meaning that I finally got good at exercising and seeing that if I did hardcore exercising, that the weight started coming off. So I would do like Jillian Michaels, uh, Jerry Love, all these great people, but I was working out like crazy. I would work out like sometimes in the morning, then in the evening, then I would go for an hour or two walk, you know, and so of course the weight came off. But the thing was, is all I was doing was thinking about food. Uh, and then also I had a very stressful job. And then I was just thinking about exercise all the time. It was just so much, so much. Fast forward, then a few years later... I think after so much yo-yo dieting, you know, my body freaked out. You know, for the first time I can remember, the first time I actually binged, I had these fiber one bars. Normally I could have one and then I can wait the next day to get another one. But this day, it was like I had one, then I was like, okay, let me get another. It was like I kept craving them. And then the next thing I know, the box was gone. And then I started, um, you know, getting more and more sweets. It was like I couldn't have enough sweets. I don't know if it was candida overgrowth. I don't know. But but it was like I couldn't have enough. But where the part, where the the more crazy making part is, is that I started be becoming like I thought, like a crackhead. Meaning that not only was I craving sweets, I started craving different foods. And so if I had this craving, it would be so strong, like I couldn't go to sleep, I couldn't focus unless I indulged. So I would get up like one in the morning and go to a gas station and buy all kind of uh, Reese's cups, Snickers, and all kind of stuff. I would go and get food and buy an excessive amount and then I would binge and then this is the part, the mental part where I really think they get some people caught up in binging, at least for me, is that then they start to lie to themselves. At least I was lying, saying, oh, after I do this, I'm going to be on the strict diet. I'm not going to have any more fried foods for the next two months or ever. Oh, I'm not going to have any more cake or snacks forever. Or, you know, I would tell myself that. And then as soon as uh, like a week would pass, I would have this intense craving again and it would start all over again. And it was just so much guilt. I would feel just so sad because I kept lying on myself over and over. This is the last time I'm going to have it. And when I told myself that it made me get more and more food because I was like, this is the last hoorah. So I really got to get a whole bunch of cake and snacks because I'm not going to do it anymore. It's the last time. So YOLO, go all out. And then it just, again, the, the same cycle. So for me personally, I was not one who um, was doing vomit. Well, vomit, you will see that in the story. That's my personal experience. But I wouldn't do that because I didn't want to, I felt like it was going to make me sick and I didn't want to be sick. I was already sick, but I guess in my mind, I didn't want to be sicker. I, I don't know. I, maybe I was just in denial, but yeah, so I, I would uh, do that. I would also uh, do crazy things like, um, I would even tell people like at this church I was going to, oh, I feel out of control with food. People didn't believe me. They're like, what do you mean? It's just food. You can control it. Oh, that's nothing. Now oh, that's just in your head. Oh, you just got to do better and have more self-control. But I really did feel out of control you know the night runs kept going meaning I'm constantly looking for food you know it was it was just a bad situation finally I got on this HCG diet. I can't remember what it is. It's some kind of hormone that produces in a pregnant woman's body. Um, but it was these uh, homeopathics uh, remedies. So I don't even know if it was truly real HCG in it, even though that's how they were marketing it. But I was on these drops and you could only eat 500 calories a day. So embarrassing. I had just gotten off of work and I was going to, I was in this modeling show. My face was beat. They had did my makeup. It was real crazy makeup, very bright. And I was almost ready to go. But, and I felt like I was, um, my head was hurting. I felt like woozy, like I could pass out. I didn't know what was going on. I thought to tell the lady to stop. I need to stop, but I still wanted to be in the show. They brought in pizza, but it wasn't on my HCG protocol. But some of me just kept saying, eat the pizza, eat the pizza. And I'm like, no, I'm doing this ACG. I'm losing this weight. I got to get it all, you know. And so next thing I know, um, I woke up and uh, they were picking me up off the floor. Uh, so, yeah.
And then I was in, um, went to the hospital for like two, three days. They did tests on me. They said my blood pressure had went really low. They had to give me medicine. Something else was wrong with my body. Oh, I think my heart wasn't pumping right. And I was like 30 something years old. And I told them about the diet and they were like, look, you could have killed yourself. They said, um, at the time I was like 170 pounds because like I said, I was working it out at the time. For me, 170 was small. I didn't have a butt in my breast. Well, they were still big, but not as big I didn't really have any fat on a lot of fat on my body at all I look I was actually thin at 170 a size 12 uh, but anyway, so they were like, you're too young to be on this floor. You shouldn't even be up here. What is going on? So I had to deal with that. You would think I would have stopped, but the cycle just kept going on and on and on. But thank God I didn't faint again. But it, what helped me was and this is, uh, stay tuned for this if you're dealing with an eating disorder. What helped me was finding this book, and I'm so bad, I can't remember the name, but it talked about like the dangers of sugar and how sugar can cause like these binge eating uh, episodes of overeating. And it was saying that you have to stop dieting. Dieting it was, is what's contributing to this binge order, binge disorder. And so it was saying you can, you have to let yourself have a piece of cake every now and again or a muffin. You can't be so obsessed with the food and so no 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 regarding the food you have to give in to um, an, an occasional indulgence so what I did was I followed that I told myself I wasn't dieting anymore and then I started going on this um this plan now what the bad thing was I blew up I think I gained all 70 80 pounds within like two three three months, maybe something like that, because I had started, um, I stopped dieting and people around me, you know, they didn't say anything many, but I know they were like, what the heck? Cause I blew up like that. But the thing was, I was no longer doing the binging uh, anymore. Now I'm not going to lie and say I didn't do a diet since then, but it was never like that. I may do some juice and um, some juice and more healthier things, but it, uh, you know, but, um, since then I haven't joined Weight Watchers. Uh, I can't say that I took any pills for weight loss or any elixirs or things like that. Now, the problem is, and I'm going to um, say, is that I will binge if I tell myself that I'm not going to do it again. Because I'll tell you, a few months ago, I told myself, oh, this is the last time. And I had like three cupcakes, three or four cupcakes for me that was a binge. And I was like, I ate the, the four cupcakes because I was lying. I'm not going to do this anymore. But I immediately corrected myself and said, self, Samira, we're not doing this again because you know where this will lead you. Because I dealt with that binge eating for years, the bulimia. And so that's why it's like, hey, I had to get off the diet. The reason why I blew up a lot too because of the weight because I stopped exercising because exercising, it had become a pain for me just to maintain that size 12. I had to work out like hardcore working out. I could never find the balance. Even before I stopped uh, dieting and gained all the weight, I was still always going for maybe from a 12 to a size 14 because I just could never find that balance. It was, you know, crazy making for me. So I was like, look, I had exercised enough. I thought I was like, I was done. And plus I had sprained my ankle one time. You know, I was doing all these jumping and these, uh, you know, all these crazy making exercises. I had to stop. So that's, so I hope you got some encouragement for that story, from that story. Like again, I said, my book is on Amazon, you can see that information in the descriptions in the description section. The name of the book is "I Should Have Worn a Curtain: A Tale of Bulimia, Self Loathing, and Romance" by Samira Alexander. Sold on Amazon. If you get it on Kindle Unlimited, it is free. Uh, if you want uh, the ebook, the ebook you don't have Kindle Unlimited. It's three ninety nine, and then the paperback is six ninety nine plus shipping and handling. And also, if you have not already done so please like, share, comment, let me know your story, and then please share this video if it resonated with you. Hope to see you soon. Bye!